From KOLN Lincoln, KGIN Grand Island, this is 1011 News, the Weekend Report. Good evening, thanks for joining us. The two best teams in the Big A played for top honors today. Nebraska came out ahead with a 7-3 win, clinching a trip to the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida. Meanwhile, Cornhusker fans unable to make the trip to Norman watched the games intently on their favorite TV sets in hopes that this would be their year. Turned out it was. After all was said and done, Nebraska's preparations proved to be more successful. Coming up later in the show, Dick Jana will be here with all the highlights of today's Nebraska victory. The Citizens Advisory Committee has released the short list for a low-level nuclear waste facility site. Yesterday, the group identified 27 potential areas located in eight counties for the facility. According to that report, the county with the most potential sites is Webster County, located in south-central Nebraska. Today, Jerry Stark went there and found residents' reaction to be good. Bob Beardsley seems to reflect the majority opinion in Red Cloud, the Webster County seat. Beardsley supports the selection of Webster County as one of the finalists for the storage site. I think it's great. I, I just think that uh, they, we can do a fine job here. We've got people that are interested in this type of thing, and, and uh, it just seems to me like if it's well regulated, and it's got to be well regulated so that we can uh, keep our finger right on it all the time, I don't see any harm in it at all. City officials feel it will be a big benefit for this depressed area. Economically, I think, would be the, the main benefit that we would have uh, in the form of uh, uh, employment, also in the, in the form of tax benefits. No one seems to argue that point. However, there is some concern about locating a facility near Red Cloud. About, then you know what it's going to do. It's going to take some of our good choice farm ground. It's bound to, and it's right next to the Republican River, and that's very choice farm ground. But the economics seem to weigh most in the minds of residents. It would do a lot for the town. We are a small farm community, and I think that it would bring a lot of revenue to the town, would help all the businesses. By whose standards? While the discussions well, continue, community leaders standards? want to keep an eye on the selection process and long-term situations regarding low-level radioactive waste facilities. Jerry Stark, 1011 News, Red Cloud. An economic boost was announced for Hastings today. The Glover Group, a, group, a company that repairs rail cars, says it plans to build a new facility in Hastings. The new plan will add 25 jobs to Hastings. Well, this has been a good business year, specifically for retailers. Through August, retail sales are up about 10 percent in Nebraska. In Lincoln, sales are up by a little more than 10 percent, and a UNL economist says sales are being driven up by an increase in personal income. Now, going into the holiday shopping season, experts say this year could be one of the best ever for retailers. We're looking at uh, yearly growth rates that are quite high by historical standards uh, in most areas of the state. Uh, Lincoln and Omaha are showing very strong growth in retail sales, and the state as a whole is as well. A big factor in the improved economic picture is an increase in farm income, but Schmidt says in addition to that, manufacturing and service-related businesses are also doing well. The crashes of two bombers this month have prompted Senator James Axon to call for all B-1B bombers to be grounded. A B-1 crashed Thursday in South Dakota, and a November 8th crash in Texas claimed another of the $280 million bombers. Exxon, who is on the Senate's Armed Services Committee, says he'd like to see the planes grounded until the crashes are explained. Air Force officials, however, say the crashes are unrelated and there is no reason to ground the B-1Bs. When 1011 News continues, the Lincoln Food Bank begins activities for its annual holiday food drive. We'll talk about these activities with Food Bank General Manager Wendy Tompkin next. Major appliances that aren't brand new can scare potential buyers away. If your real estate company can't protect them, you're not listed with the right real estate company because you're not listed with an ERA broker. Selling a house can be frustrating. If your real estate company can't buy your home if they don't sell it, you're not listed with the right real estate company because you're not listed with an ERA broker.
With the holiday season upon us, the Lincoln Food Bank is preparing for its annual food drive. In an effort to collect supplies needed for the holidays, the food bank is stepping up its efforts to collect food for the needy. Today, Richmond Gordman's store official offered a special half-day promotion to benefit the food bank. Between 8 a.m. and noon, anyone bringing in a canned good donation received 20% off any purchase. Richmond Gordman then matched each donation with a 35-cent cash contribution to the food bank. Joining us now to talk about the food bank's activities is Wendy Topkin. She's general manager of the food bank. Wendy, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Rob. First of all, what are some of the activities that you're going to be doing in this food drive? Well, the biggest, our biggest food drive of the year is scheduled to kick off November 30th, and um, this is the holiday food share bag that will be inserted in the morning and evening paper on November 30th. And we're asking people to fill it up and return it to participating grocers. There's 32 of them acting as collection sites. And those grocers are right, listed right on the bag? That's right. Okay. So a question that comes into my mind is with everybody, we hear a lot about food drives. With everybody talking about a food drive, are you stepping on each other's toes? Or is there a lot of con uh, competition for the food? Well, the reason why the food bank waits until December to kick off this drive is to try and not compete with the agencies that have existing Thanksgiving programs in place. So that's why we wait until December. And then the food that is collected will be distributed to uh, many of the local agencies, all of the ones that are doing emergency food assistance in the Lincoln community. So pretty much where your food goes now, whoever you give it to, it'll all end up at the food bank and then back out into the agencies, is that correct? Uh, yeah, in December, that's, that's correct, yes. What is, your, what is your goal for the food drive? Uh, this year, we're hoping to at least last, uh, match last year's collections. That was 51,500 pounds of food that were collected. So we're helping to match that and maybe do a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And if someone wanted to have any kind of information or if they wanted to help, what should they contact you? Who should they contact? That's right. The, the food bank is listed in the phone book. Our number is 466-8170. And uh, we're happy to hear from people who want to help. Okay. Wendy, thank you for joining us, and good luck with your food drive. Thank you, Ron. When we come back, it looks like the precipitation expected for our area won't make it here after all. Ron Willis will tell us what's in store for the rest of the weekend. That's it? That's all? You gotta be kidding. You're done. You sure? If you thought dental cleanings were easy with Target Control Crest, I can't believe it. They just got easier. Boy, that was fast. Introducing new and improved Target Control Crest. You're all done? No. The new Tartar Fighting Formula that can actually help stop Tartar before it starts. Piece of cake. Tartar Control Crest, the dentist choice, is now harder on Tartar and easier on you. Thank you very much. It's almost upon us, the breathtaking beauty of the Christmas season. Celebrate this most joyous season with gifts of jewelry from Sarter Heyman Jewelers. Tremendous savings during our annual Christmas sale. Shimmering pearls, magnificent colored stones, or a gift for the man in your life. This Christmas, give jewelry, the gift of love from Sarter Heyman Jewelers. Ron Willison now to look at the weather, and Ron, I noticed I was watching the Weather Channel a little this morning when I got up, and it said that it's going to be nicer, like Monday, it's going to be 50s, is that right? Yeah, it's the high pressure should move in after this uh, stormy weather moves off to the south of us, and it did dismiss our area, so uh, we're going to see a few flurries in the eastern part of the state, but we did get lucky from this storm. They are getting some heavy rain down south of us. We'll start with our first graphic, and it shows that area of cloudiness is all the way across the central parts of the Nebraska right now, and it is raining very heavily in parts of the southern states in through Louisiana and in through Arkansas. They had as much as nine inches of rain in the last 24 hours in, near Little Rock, Arkansas, and some river flooding and just some all around uh, very heavy uh, unsettled weather down south. We'll take a look at our big picture and we can see this uh, cloudy mo cloudiness moving up to the northeast and they are, uh, they do have tornado watches out right now for parts of eastern Texas in through Louisiana and into Arkansas right now. So this weather uh, will be dissipating off to the south and moving up to the east and ca causing some storm up in the eastern parts of the United States. Right now for Nebraska, the skies are clearing out and they should remain clear for the next couple of days as high pressure sets in. And we'll see the, the winds go from the uh, northwest all the way to the west by the time this high pressure moves south of us, which will uh, cause the, the, the skies to clear and it should uh, be a fairly nice week uh, ahead of us. Except for Thursday, it looks like another chance for showers moves in, but it's a little bit uh, early to tell yet, but it'll be highs in the 40s and 50s for the next couple of days at least. Let's look at the national radar. Very heavy rain continues all the way through Texas and all the way up through the Mississippi River Valley, and this system is moving off to the northeast. 
Current temperatures across Nebraska are hovering around the 35 degree mark. It's 33 in Shattered right now, 38 in Scotts Bluff, 37 in Sydney. And off to the eastern parts of the state, we see a 31 in Omaha and it's dropping down uh, right now in the eastern, eastern parts of the state. It's 29 right now in Lincoln. And currently in Lincoln right now, I said the temperature is 29. I won't tell you again. <laughs> Partly cloudy skies. The pressure is steady, 85% humidity. North winds at 9 miles per hour. Forecast for tonight is mostly clear in the western central. We'll see partly cloudy skies in the east. It's going to be rather cold. cold. We'll see temperatures in the teens, uh, around the 15 degree mark, into the lower 20s in the eastern parts of the state. And we are already seeing that right now as the cooler air sets in from the north. Mostly sunny and warmer for tomorrow. We'll see 40 degrees all the way across the state and cooling down into the uh, 30s for tomorrow. And for Monday, we'll see temperatures raising up all the way in the 50s in the panhandle to the mid to upper 40s in the eastern part of the state. So that's about normal. And Looks like the next couple days should be quite nice through the area. And for Grand Island Lincoln tonight, we'll see mainly clear conditions, cooler conditions. The temperature is 17 in Grand Island. North winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Partly cloudy skies and cooler in Lincoln. We'll see a low of 20. And for tomorrow, we'll see mostly sunny but cool in Grand Island. A high of 42. Lincoln cool. The 40 degree rating. Northwesterly winds 8 to 16 miles per hour. A bit uh, milder tomorrow. Partly cloudy skies still. Grand Island will be up to 49. And Lincoln with a 47. And the extended outlook Tuesday through Thursday looks pretty nice. Highs in the 50s. Cooling down again on Thursday. So we'll have to wait and see how that system develops. Seems mighty unseasonable, doesn't it? 50 degrees in the middle of November? The high right, the normal high right now is about 47 or 48 degrees. We're just kind of getting accustomed to these cooler temperatures. These fronts have been moving through rather fast, but this uh, jet stream should be flattening out and we'll see some fairly uh, nice temperatures for the next couple of days. So all the stuff we just put up with the last few days, that was unseasonable? Well, uh, you could say that. We, you know, we're normally prone to see showers in the mm -hmm. fall and everything, so anything seasonable, I guess, in Nebraska. <laughs> I guess that's exactly right. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. Next in sports, it's been four years in the making, but Nebraska finally beat the, Hus the Sooners. Dick Jana will be up next with today's sports. Another day dawns. But no one knows exactly what the day will bring. Not even the weatherman. And that being the case, it's well worth having the peace of mind only this card gives you. The one from Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Those who have it feel better than those who don't. For a limited time on today's Chevy truck, a change of heart lets you keep the change during Cash Back of America. A buy now opportunity with up to $2,400 in total savings. Cash Back plus option package discounts on 1989 Chevy S10s save you up to $2,400. On full size pickups, up to $2,200. On four wheel drive S Blazers, up to $2,400. Record truck shipments save you plenty. While you're shopping for a new truck this week, let Cash Back of America put you in the heartbeat of America. Hurry for today's Chevy truck. This week, see your Chevy team dealer and save. Until now, plowing through what the snowplow left behind was one of winter's toughest challenges. Now, Toro introduces the exclusive PowerShift snow thrower. The PowerShift automatically puts more weight on the front for a more powerful bite on winter's toughest snow. The new Toro PowerShift. The only challenge left? Getting out of the driveway to go buy one. Save $50 on the Toro CCR2000 at DNS Garden Center and Dubsky's Auto. Of all the people on this planet, we Americans enjoy a unique distinction. Despite the dry weather that has hurt our farmlands, we spend only 14% of our income on food. That's less than virtually anyone else spends in the free world. And because we spend less on food, we have more money for the little luxuries of life. Brought to you on behalf of the American farmer by the makers of Dual Herbicide. Dick Janney now the sports and Dick, it's about time. Been four years uh, for the Huskers. Tell you what, probably a lot of, a lot of people definitely happy today, but probably none more than the Husker seniors. I mean, yeah. have they ever beat uh, the Oklahoma? The seniors have never beaten Oklahoma, so this I'm sure a very uh, sweet victory for them. The annual shootout for the Big A championship between Nebraska and Oklahoma took place today in Norman. The winner to go to the Orange Bowl to face Miami and the loser to the Citrus Bowl to face Clemson. Nebraska took the ball on the game's opening possession and went 80 yards for a touchdown. The big plays in the drive were this 33-yard run by I-back Ken Clark and this 30-yard pass to Richard Bell. It was a third and 13 play and Bell would get it uh, down to the 10-yard line. Quarterback Steve Taylor would eventually run it to inside the one. Great run here for Taylor. He almost gets it in, 
but then would sneak it into the end zone for a touchdown on the next play. With 11.06 to go in the first quarter, it was Nebraska 7, Oklahoma nothing. But that would be all the scoring in the first half, with the Huskers failing on a couple of golden opportunities. In the second quarter, NU had the ball at the Oklahoma 19-yard line, but Taylor's pass is intercepted in the end zone by Scott Garl to end the threat. Then, just before halftime, it happened again. Taylor back to pass near midfield, but Garl intercepts, and the half ends with the score Nebraska 7, Oklahoma nothing. Then, in the third quarter, it was Oklahoma with the missed opportunity. The Sooners had the ball at the Nebraska 35, but Charles Thompson has his pass intercepted by Lorenzo Hicks, ending the threat and keeping Nebraska on top 7-0. But on the next play, the Sooners got the ball right back. Clark breaks free, but he fumbles, and Oklahoma recovers at the Nebraska 31. And who's on it? Scott Garl, the same Sooner who got both interceptions earlier. But the Husker defense would force OU to try a 28-yard field goal, and R.D. Lasher boots it through the rain to make it Nebraska 7, Oklahoma 3 at the end of the third quarter. Somehow, though, you just had the feeling the Sooners would work their fourth quarter magic again. But the NU defense just would not let it happen. The defensive interior made up of Lawrence Pete, Kent Wells, and Willie Griffin made OU coach Barry Switzer eat his words about Nebraska's defensive front not being as good as last year. It came down to this. Nebraska had to punt with less than two minutes left in the game. It will be partially blocked, and the Sooners take over near midfield. Could OU pull a rabbit out of its hat again? It came down to fourth and 14 at the OU 48. Thompson scrambles around. Pete and Griffin chase him and sack him to put the final nail in the Sooner coffin. Uh, Thompson may have suffered a broken leg on that play. All Nebraska had to do was run out the clock and Nebraska wins 7-3, breaking a four-game losing streak to Oklahoma. The Huskers will take an 11-1 record to Miami to meet the Miami Hurricane in the Orange Bowl on January 2nd. By the way, Miami meets LSU tonight, and the Nebraska Cornhuskers win it 7-3, all seven points coming in the uh, first quarter. In fact, on the very first drive of the game, the Huskers win it. Now let's go to the scoreboard. While Nebraska was beating Oklahoma 7-3, it was Oklahoma State 49, Iowa State 28 at Ames. Barry Sanders had 293 yards rushing and four touchdowns to help rally the Cowboys, who will be headed for the Holiday Bowl now to meet Wyoming. The score was tied 28-28 late in that ball game, but Oklahoma State really pulled away at the end. Elsewhere in the Big 8, Missouri beat Kansas uh, in Lawrence 55-17, and it was Colorado 56 and Kansas State 14, Colorado headed for the Freedom Bowl. In games involving teams from the AP Top 20, Notre Dame beat Penn State 21-3, and uh, the Irish accepted the bid to go to the Fiesta Bowl to meet West Virginia. Southern Cal leading UCLA at last report 28-16 in the fourth quarter, and as I mentioned, Miami plays at LSU tonight. Now, Syracuse and West Virginia are going at it. Uh, at West Virginia, it's 7-3 now in the second quarter. Syracuse will go on to play either Auburn or Syracuse in the Hall of Fame Bowl. Michigan headed for the Rose Bowl to meet that Southern Cal UCLA winner, and Michigan lead, uh, beat Ohio State 34-31 in a big game uh, at Ohio State today. Clemson beat South Carolina 29-10. Clemson and Oklahoma will now meet in the Citrus Bowl in Orlando. It was uh, Houston coming from behind to beat Texas Tech 30-29. to That's the final score now. And uh, Houston will meet Washington State in the Aloha Bowl over in Hawaii. Washington State playing Washington uh, late this evening or this afternoon. In Ireland today, the first game ever staged over there, Boston College beat Army 38-24. to Army will play Alabama now in the Sun Bowl. It was Michigan State 36, Wisconsin nothing elsewhere in the Big Ten. Michigan State will meet Georgia in the Gator Bowl. It was Illinois 14, Northwestern 9. Illinois will meet Florida in the All-American Bowl. And Indiana beat Purdue 52-7. Indiana will play South Carolina in the Liberty Bowl. BYU was upset today. Utah upset the Cougars 57-28. While in the NAIA Division II playoffs, Nebraska Wesleyan in its first ever NAIA National Playoff appearance, a loser at Evangel, Missouri, 45-14. Evangel scoring 33 points in the second quarter to win that one. Uh, Wesleyan in the uh, playoffs uh, for the first time in the NAIA and for the second time ever in school history in postseason play. There was college basketball also this afternoon, the tip-off classic between Duke and Kentucky, and Duke, uh, the number one team in the AP preseason ratings, beat Kentucky 80 to 55 and a bit more of college basketball also tonight. 
Former Nebraska Cornhusker defensive end Neil Smith, now with the Kansas City Chiefs, underwent emergency surgery yesterday to correct a urological problem. Smith, the team's first-round draft choice, will be out for at least two weeks. He practiced with the team yesterday morning, but later complained of abdominal cramps and was admitted to a medical center where he had the surgery. In tennis, fifth-seeded Pam Shriver upset top-seed Steffi Graf in the semifinals of the Virginia Slims Championships in New York, snapped a 46-match winning streak for Graf, who's suffering from the flu. And in the NAIA Women's Cross Country Championships in Wisconsin, Donna Spickelmeyer of Kearney State finished third overall. She was the top finisher among all the Nebraskans competing there. Dick, I have to ask you, you saw the game today, 7-3. to three. Is that the what you were expecting? Well, I think I expected a few more points than that. Perhaps that rain, the wet conditions held the score down just a little bit. But what a great effort for the Cornhuskers to win it. Certainly was. Thank you, Dick. And when we come back, we'll have a final word.